and good day. We are highly welcome. Yeah, we are highly welcome, and I really thank you for being one of us today. Okay, on the board, you can see I have um, the introduction written on the board introduction to FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average. I'm not going to solve any question, but I just want to make you understand some certain steps or things you need to know if you want to solve any question on this topic. Now, there are a few things I'm going to teach you here. First of all, how to present your solution. That is how to draw your table because your answer must be in a tabular form, okay? That is the first thing. Then the next thing as well, you see the FIFO, the LIFO, the weighted average, simple average, and so many other types or other methods have different things, but they are similar. Now, when we talk about FIFO, FIFO, just like the name implies, first in, first out. LIFO, last in, first out. It just plays a simple scenario. Then the third thing I'm going to teach us again is how to identify our values. Most times you will be asked to show the gross profit, to calculate your total cost of goods sold, and what is the, you know, some certain questions. So I'm going to break it down for you to help you understand the concepts. And as well, I'm also going to teach you how to make use of the relevant places to add and to subtract or even to divide. Okay? Then, as well as the values to make use of if you are solving a question under the weighted average. These are things you need to know before attempting any question. If you don't know it, you will find it difficult to answer the question. So try as much as you can to pay attention and hold on to your, to your writing materials. Then, whatever points I say, you can pause the video, you write it out, then you continue. Then, before you proceed to watch the calculations itself. So, there will be no calculations in this video, but this video is the first thing you must watch before solving or before watching any other videos which I have available for you. So let us go. The first thing is how to draw the table. If you are given a question under the FIFO, LIFO or weighted average, you must present it in a tabular form. And the table goes this way. Now, it goes like this. It comes down again. So, we have this section and we have another section. Just follow the steps, okay? So, we have our dates. We have the dates. Dates. Your line comes down, all right? Now, we always deal with um, quantity, unit price, and amount. So, we have the quantity, we have the unit price, Then I have the amounts. Now take a look again. When it comes to amounts, I will advise you to rule up again and possibly have a double line. I will explain better again. You repeat the same thing which you have here. We have the quantity. Watch my line. You can see where it started from. We have the unit price. There will be a Naira sign, okay? Then we have the amounts. Now, once you get to the amount, your line should go up and possibly a double line or a tick line. So, we'll repeat the same thing again. I have the quantity. I have the unit price with the value, the Naira value. Then, we'll have what? The amounts. Please don't abbreviate in the exams, please. Now, you must know how to do this. It is very, very important. But it didn't stop here. We have this for the receipt section R, I, B. So this is receipt. This is issues. And this is balance. Now, any transaction that is being recorded in Either the receipt section or the issues section must be balanced. So, under the FIFO LIFO weighted average, every transaction must be balanced, all right? It must be balanced. They must come to this aspect, all right? So, this is the first thing you need to know. It is very, very important. Meanwhile, there is something very important again. Your account must be titled. So, don't forget, all right? Don't forget, your account must be titled. 
based on how the question comes, your account must be titled. You can title this Charlie Kells Nigeria Limited. Then you specify what you're solving for below FIFO or LIFO or the weighted average or the simple average. It is dependent. But specifically in these videos, you are going to learn the FIFO method, the LIFO method, and the weighted average. There are some other methods as well. So, received issues and balance. This is the first thing you need to know. Now, how does FIFO work? Just like the name implies, you've heard me say FIFO, FIFO, FIFO. It is a simple word, it's just an acronym. FIFO simply means first in, first out. First in, first out. That is it. LIFO is also an acronym, which means last in, first out. All right, so take note of this too, okay? First in, first out, last in, first out. Now, there are rules here, all right? You use the rule to apply to this step when you're solving your questions. And the rule goes this way. FIFO says first in, first out. Let me use a simple example of what you can easily remember. You own a provision shop, and let's assume you also sell bread in your provision shop. Now, you know, the bakery supplies you bread like maybe on regular basis, on daily basis rather, maybe every day. Now let's assume on Monday, they supplied you 20 loaves of bread. On Monday, you were supplied 20 loaves of bread. So, and on Tuesday, they will come again to supply another 20 loaves of bread, right? Now when they supply you 20 loaves of bread, probably maybe at the end of the day, you sold only 18 loaves of bread. Remember you have two loaves of bread left. Okay, now on Tuesday, they supply you another 20 loaves of bread. If a customer comes to buy the bread, which of these breads will you bring out first to sell to the person? It is the remaining two that you have from the yesterday's stores, right? Before you now, once you are done selling this, before you can now start selling the 20 that was supplied to you newly. It is just a simple law. The first in, the first out, all right? This was the bread that came in first, 20 loaves. You sold 18, remaining 2. The following day, the company supplies you 20. Customers come to your shop again to buy. You sell with this first. You ensure you are done selling this remaining 2 before you start selling 20. Some persons will put the bread first. The old ones first. The new ones will be inside. Just that logic, okay? Now, the same thing applies to LIFO. But LIFO now goes the other way around. LIFO... With the same example again, you were supplied 20 loaves of bread. Now, at the end of the day, you sold 18 loaves of bread, remaining 2 loaves of bread. On the following day, the company supplies you another 20 loaves of bread. Now, a customer comes to buy bread the following day. That's why the fact that you still have 2 loaves from the previous one, but you decided to sell from this remainder first. All right, we started to sell from this new supply, rather, from this new supply first. So that is it. This new supply came in last, but you sold from it first. All right, here, this new supply came in last, but you didn't sell from it first. You ensure that you've exhausted the remaining two from the first entry you had before you sold from the new entry. That is just it. I have a simple illustration to this. I'll always say that LIFO works in the descending order. The first in, the first out. LIFO works in the ascending order. The last in, the first out. The first out. The one that came in last goes out first. That is for LIFO. The one that came in first goes out first. That is for FIFO. Okay? Now, the questions might come in different ways. A question might tell you, um, like, received 1,000 units at 24,200 per unit. Now, how do you treat this question? Students find it challenging to attempt questions like that. But let me help you out here. Now, there are two ways these questions will come. Just like what I said, you might have a question which said, received, you can see, received 1,000 units 1,000 units at 24,200 
per unit. This is one, right? This is another form of question. This question goes this way again. Received 500 units. Five hundred units valued at fifteen thousand naira. Okay, and it is sometimes confusing to know the particular one to make use of because there are some laws that have been applied here. Okay, so before I explain this, let me give us the breakdown of this table. Now, it goes this way: in every question, two values will be given. Either you are given the quantity and the unit price or you are given the quantity and the amount okay these two values will be given so if for instance the question tells you that you have a 10 as a quantity let's say in may you have 10 units 10 quantity and you have um five units it goes this way to get the total amount you multiply these two values so this is where you make use of that sign you multiply you say 10 times 5, it is equal to what? 50. Now you've got the total value. 10 times 5, it is equal to 50. Now you've gotten the value. So the same thing applies. Let's assume the question did not give us this. We'll have 10 and we'll have 50. So how do we get our unit price? We now say 50 divided by 10 and it will give you what? 5. Okay? That is just the logic. But now, it is very easy saying it this way. Let us now take a look at the example we have here. How do you know the particular value that represents the quantity, the particular one that is for the amount, and the particular one that is the unit price? Let me explain it with this now. It says, received 1,000 units, okay? 1,000 units, anyone you see after this question, any value you get immediately right after the first um, word there is your unit price. Okay, it's your unit price. Majority of the questions I've seen and I've solved, that is how it comes. Okay, so take note, it might be changed, but try to understand this concept so that even if it comes the right way around, you'll be able to tackle it. So, 1000 units at 24,200 per unit. I remember I told us this is unit price. Some tables will say cost per unit or price per unit. So this is for the unit price. So the unit price will always be here. So to value this now, we can always say what? This is received 1,000 units at 24,200 per unit. So 1,000 units, we have received 1,000 units at what? 24,400 per unit. Because of this word, per unit. So we are going to record this particular value word here, which is 24,200. So, you multiply these two values to give you your answer here, okay? Now, for instance, if this value is given and this is given and you don't have this, you now divide to get this. So, take a look at the second question. It says, received 500 units valued at 15,000. So, going with the same illustration again, 500 units here, means what the quantity we have 500 here right valued this word again valued now take a look at valued valued at you just come back to your amount the final amount here so valued at unlike this that told us per price per unit or price per unit rather unlike this one that told us price per unit so what do we do you have 500 and you have what fifteen thousand. so when you divide Whatever answer it gives you now stands as what? The unit price. It is a very simple logic, but you need to understand the concept because questions might come in a confusing way, okay? So, with what I explained here, it has actually told us where to make use of the multiplication sign and also when and where to divide. What about subtraction? When do we subtract? When do we add, okay? So, it also goes this way. Now, this receipt section, as I told us earlier, that every transaction here and here must be balanced, okay? So, whenever a transaction from the receipt section is coming over to the balance section, we add it up. Whenever the issues is coming to the balance section, we subtract. How do we go about it? Let's assume we have this transaction, okay, as our opening balance, and we have another transaction, again, 
we have another transaction. So we have these two transactions now. So coming to the balance already, this first transaction, we have it here as 5, 10, okay, and 50. If this transaction is coming over to this place, it is going to be added in the total. How do we go about it? We say 10 plus 10 is equal to what? 20, all right? 50 plus 50 is equal to what? 100. You get it? What about here? 100 divided by 20 will now give you the answer here, okay? That is how it flows. Now, let us proceed again. If we have from the issues section and we are bringing it over to this side, let's assume we have 5 and 3. 5 times 3 is 15. And we are bringing it over to the balance section. What we do is this. 20 minus 5 is what? 15, right? Then 100 minus 15 is what? 85. So 85 divided by 15 will give us the value here. So take note of the steps, all right? 5, 20 minus 5 is 15. 100 minus 15 is 85. 85 divided by 15 will give us this value. But when solving a practical question, under the FIFO and LIFO, the unit price are not necessary. You will see that in the examples I will solve for you. We'll just have the unit price this way, all right? But when it now comes to the weighted average, here we'll make use of the unit price and there are steps and procedures which you need to take to understand the concept, all right? So, we need to understand this very, very well. Now, like I told us, we have the amount here, right? We have our amount here. We have the amount here. This is amount. We have amount and we also have an amount. Now, by the time we are done solving, let's assume after solving we have 100. After solving here, we have, let's assume we have 50. And here, let's assume we have 200. That is, after solving, when we added everything, the summation of all the values we have here, right? So, the final answer you have here, the final answer you have here under this receipt section is known as the total purchased. Purchased. This is the total purchased. Okay? Take good note of it. It is very, very important. It represents the value for the total purchased. Now, coming to this section, the final answer which you have here as well represents what? The cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold okay we take note of that then when you come over to this last place the answer you have here represents what the value the value of the closing stock the value of the closing stock all right so these things are very important you know depending on the format you are solving with Remember I told you I'm going to solve questions with two different methods. So there are methods you solve, you need this. There are methods you solve, you don't need this. Okay? So you just need to understand these concepts very well. So that anyhow the question comes, you give it the best you can. So, the next videos you will see practical examples that will help you. And the steps which I have for you in those videos will help you solve any kind of question you see under the FIFO, LIFO, weighted, simple average, and so on and so forth. Thanks for your time, and thanks for being a loyal subscriber, because I believe you have subscribed to our YouTube already. There are lots for you to learn online. We wish you the best in all you do, and if you have questions or you need clarification, just send us a mail, helpingstudent70 at gmail.com, and we'll definitely get back to you. All right? Do have a blessed day. Goodbye. See you in the next video.